Uh, so I'm Brylon Achilles. I'm the Global Field CTO here at Actifio. And uh, we're going to jump into a bunch of live demos around this technology to show you uh, how it works for all these different use cases. Um, but before we do that, I'm just going to spend a few minutes to review the architecture um, of how we do and how we deliver data as a service to our customers. Uh, I'll also mention that we did uh, do a, a fairly deep dive last year at Tech Field Day as well. So you can reference uh, those videos if you want some further information. Um, but what really de uh, designs every architectural and product decision uh, that we make at Actifio uh, are these three principles, speed, efficiency, and scale. How do we give data to the customer, to the right people within the customer quickly, right? Without all the um, uh, time delays and, and hassles of, of traditional processes. How do we move large data sets from one data center to another, from one public cloud into another cloud as efficiently as you possibly can? And how do we deliver this for the largest enterprises in the world? You know, petabytes and petabytes and petabytes uh, of data. How do we build the platform so that you can do this uh, from you know, on-premises data centers to public clouds, all of the above, with all the enterprise apps that, that Ash just mentioned uh, at a scale uh, of the largest customers in the world. And so you'll see as we go through the technology here today that we come back to these three, uh, these three principles uh, very often. Um, so with that said, what do we do with Actifio? How do we deliver data as a service? Uh, it all starts with uh, capturing the data from, from wherever it is. Whatever that data is, data means different things to different people. Might be a virtual machine, might be an uh, Oracle database, might be a bunch of unstructured data or files. Uh, whatever that data set is, we're going to capture it the most efficient way that you possibly can. And that is incrementally forever. We're going to look at two discrete points in time and only move the change blocks between those two points of time. I don't, I don't care what happens in the middle. I'm just going to look at what it was and what it is and only move those deltas. We're going to move the least amount of data you can possibly move, and we're going to move it the most efficient way you can possibly move it to update uh, a golden copy um, using a technology that we call our virtual data pipeline, which is where uh, a lot of these patents are that, that uh, Ash mentioned uh, in, the, in the previous presentation. Uh, the virtual data pipeline is all about taking those Bless blocks of data of the most recent view of that database, of that virtual machine, of that file system, and making that available, but also keeping the history. What did that database look like yesterday, two days ago, seven years ago? And delivering those data sets as a service to anybody and everybody in the enterprise uh, who wants access to them. It can be used for uh, very, very fast, rapid uh, backups and restores, absolutely, or it can be used to load the data warehouse or it can be used to try a patch before you do it in production, uh, or you can do it for a test and development or DevOps, automated uh, you know, uh, CICD and, and uh, you know, unit testing, these kinds of things. Um, so that's a question then. Yes, please. So you say it's forever incremental copies of the data. What sort of verification process is there to verify that the copy is good? Yeah, it's a great, it's a great question. So we actually uh, have patent around that as well. We have an algorithm um, that does fingerprinting on the production, on the source data, compared to what we have. It's not just a, uh, is the corrupted data that we read the same on both ends? Yep, it's still corrupted. We are actually looking at the source, and we use an algorithm that doesn't do it all at once. It, it randomly, uh, different offsets of the blocks. And over time, eventually, it checks sums every single block. But every time we do an incremental capture, we, we check some a different part of the, um, of the data set. We call it salt and pepper uh, internally. We have a, okay. patented, a patent on this algorithm, and we actually, that algorithm actually helped us find a uh, silent corruption in a um, hypervisor vendor's uh, change block tracking uh, for virtual machine backups that no other vendor found. Everyone used the API. We're the only company that found the fact that there was a, actually a bug in that change tracking because we were the only ones that were actually checked something against the source data and the data that we have in our system. Okay. Oh, that is a really scary thought. There are lots of corrupted backups in the world that you don't know about. Right. Yeah. Corrupted is one thing. Corrupted, I don't know about, is really scary. There are a lot of those. And that's one of the benefits of this platform that you'll see in the, when it gets to the live demos, is at any given time, if you want to verify a backup, spin it up, do a DB consistency check on it, right? So it, it enables a very uh, belt and suspenders approach to um, giving you additional assurances, right, that, that, that you can recover from the backup that you have. And there isn't corruption. So we do have some automated things, but we also enable um, a, you know, uh, the, the ability to, to spin up these environments virtually and, and, and check into them as well. Is that something you could schedule as far as those 
automatic, uh, well, the spinning up to actually verify it? Absolutely, okay. yep, absolutely. And we'll talk about that. We have, we have automation, we have workflows, we have um, API integration. So we we'll actually show some demos. I'll, I'll, we don't exactly have that demo, but I'll talk to it when we Perfect. get to place. So incremental forever, efficiency, speed, and scale. And then once we have that data, once we have that golden image, we deliver it to anybody and everybody in the enterprise that has the permissions uh, to access that data. And, and kind of to your, to your question you know, earlier, Keith, um, security is a big thing. We do have a three-tier <coughs> model so that we can ensure that only the people that are authorized to get the data can get the data. Um, but that is um, uh, certainly a conversation we have a lot with customers is when, when, we, when you're dealing with customers' uh, sensitive information, they want to make sure there's safeguards there. And we do have those built in. But from the single, um, the single enterprise uh, system of record, this golden copy, we've got one view of the data and then everyone's reading from the same sheet of music. Someone can do a recovery from a, from a backup and restore perspective, absolutely. You can do a DR test from it, you can load the data warehouse, you can do test data management, you can do a database consistency check, you can run reporting, you can run analytics, but it's all off of a virtual copy of the data. Every user gets their own virtual copy of the data, fully read writable, they can do whatever they like to it, um, but it's enabled with self-service and automation, and they can do this as you're going to see in our live demos. In, How are you uh, defining who has access to the data via NTFS permissions or your own permissions? Yeah, it's a little bit of both. We have, we have three tier multi-tenant security models. So we'll use like LDAP and Active Directory for user authentication. And then once we know who the user is, we map them to our own security model inside of our system. So we have users, which is pretty straightforward. And the users have a role with a lot of granularity of what they can and can't do. And then they're part of an organization or multiple organizations, which lets them see I'm a, I'm a developer, I can only see these two databases on these three hosts, and I can only use this storage, and I can only use this policy to manage. So it's a little bit of both. Okay, so one more visual aid, and then we'll jump into the details. Uh, this is the product that we're gonna be looking at here today. This is one of our user interfaces, Actifio Global Manager. We've got multiple ways to manage this platform. RESTful APIs, which you'll see as well. PowerShell modules, Python modules, uh, integrations with orchestration tools. But since we're all humans in the room, we'll focus on the, on the GUI a little bit here. Um, but once we get that data, once we read those changes like we just talked about, the last part I want to mention is what we do with the data. Where, where do we put it? Where do we store it? And you know, to Ash's point earlier, you know, we're a software company. We're software. You can run our software on premises, you can run our software in the cloud, you can choose whatever infrastructure you want. If you want to run our software on hyperconverged, go right ahead. Can I actually, you to, please. sorry, can I back up and ask a question? I'm not totally sure what you mean by a virtual, because my background's in mathematics and data science, so if I'm operating on a data set, right, I know what it means when I'm, say, an R making a copy of it, and it's literally, I, there's two of them. Yeah. What do you mean by virtual copy? So if two data scientists, say, are working on the same, are they literally working on the same physical data set? I yeah, so it basically there's, there's, a, there's a source of truth at the top, and then there's uh, branches or forks from that. So if I have a, uh, you know, an Oracle database, for example, and when we have three users that have their own virtual copy, there's basically three branches that all begin the same. They all point to that source of truth. And then each developer can, can change different parts of it without, without affecting each other. So with, it, it looks like kind of a GitHub analogy, but if let's say I make some kind of change, I change say the data type of one column, mm -hmm. that doesn't affect anybody else? Cause I, but I'm operating, but we're all operating on the set. I guess that's what I'm trying to wrap my head yeah, around. Yeah, so, so all the reads from the data source are linked back to the original source. Any okay. writes you do, inserts or updates in a database or writes to a file system, that is only in your virtual copy. Oh, so okay. So that consumes real space, but the reads do not. So it's the logical equivalent of a snapshot. It's a lot like a snapshot on a Okay, cool. okay, I got it, thank you. But um, it's at the data item level? Sorry? It's at the data item, not the block? Uh, the granularity is, it's, it's all blocks underneath, but yeah. We, oh, okay, so it is, a, it is functionally a snapshot. Absolutely, yeah, we manage blocks of data and we put these okay. blocks in there you go. So once we capture the data from whatever you have, virtual machines, databases, file systems, physical servers, we then store it on whatever infrastructure you choose and wherever location you want as well. And we have multiple um, you know, tiers of, 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 of how we store the data. We keep some data available, ready to go at a moment's notice which is uh, labeled snapshot here, right? We're keeping, in this case, we're, we're updating our copy every four hours from whatever application we're managing. We're keeping two days worth ready to go because 90% of the time, that's all you need. 
90% of the time, everybody wants yesterday's data or four hours ago data. They don't want old data. That's only 10% uh, of the time uh, that, that that usually occurs. So for 90% of your use cases, you're going to access the data right away. Um, but maybe you're keeping your data longer for uh, compliance or for um, you know, long-term long retention. So we've got a, a built-in deduplication and compression capability that will leverage any media you want. It's not a purpose-built piece of hardware. Give us some, some storage from, from any vendor, and we'll turn that into a deduplicated and compressed efficient long-term data repository. So you're storing data in your own format then? So you can't take advantage of a flash arrays native deduplication? No, you, you can't. So we store data in native format here and here. So in this, in this part, it is. Okay. It's, 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 it's you know, fairly straightforward. But it's deduplicated and compressed. We're only storing each individual block one time. So that does require the Actifio engine to get the data out. But we've actually got a really slick demo on, on object storage, which is kind of the third uh, tier, where it's absolutely in native format. And we're actually are going to show you a live demo how you can get the data out without Actifio. Cool. Um, so those are the three uh, classes of how we store the data. Native format, ready to go. DDoop to compress for kind of medium term. And then object storage for long term retention, uh, as well as other use cases as you'll see in the demos. And then we can replicate the data as well from one uh, data center to another between clouds, Amazon to Google, uh, whatever you want to do. Um, but we, we drive all this through a simple service level agreement that you see here on this screen.